Hey everybody, Merlin Silver here once again welcoming you back to the Ableton Certified Trainer Nordic Community. This is going to be a short video giving you five tips on transitions. So transitions I think are really, really important. I like to think of it as the grammar of music. It lets you know when one thing has stopped and another thing begins. So being creative and imaginative with the way you transition from one idea to the next can really help support your songwriting and make sure that your music follows a story and a narrative. So let's get stuck in. So I've decided to use Psytrance as an example today. I've cooked up a basic Psytrance loop and I've chosen this form of music because I think the transitions are very, very sound design based. It's quite monotonous in the way it's composed and that's not critique. I love this kind of music myself, but we need to think a bit more outside the box to make the transitions interesting. So right now I've got three kind of perhaps obvious ideas that we're not really going to take any further. I've got a reverse symbol, I've got a riser sample, and I've got a crash symbol at the beginning of the new section. So let's just have a listen to this example. Sweet. So as you can hear, we've gone from a very basic drum and bass kind of riff into something that's a bit more melodic and is going to build into a song. But to start with, I think I'm just going to delete these three tracks and we're going to start thinking of something a bit more interesting. So the first thing I want to show you is the idea of resampling the last part of the section and pitch dropping it. So to do this, I'm going to make a new audio track. I'm going to set the input to resampling. And I'm just going to very quickly arm the track and record this last few bars. Let's have a go. Okay, so now I've got these four captured in here and I'm just going to delete the original. Let's zoom in here. I'm going to go into this new resampled track, turn on Complex Pro. You could use complex or a different mode, but for me, I'll do that today. And I'm going to go into the clips transposition and I'm going to make a simple pitch drop down, perhaps, yeah, more than an octave, maybe 18, 19. Give it a little bit of a bend here so it's not quite so computery. And let's have a listen. Let's zoom out a bit and start here. So sweet, that's a really easy way you can just signal to the listener that something's about to change. So the next thing I want to show you is the idea of putting some effects on your master channel. So what I'm going to do is add an auto filter and I'm going to add, in this instance, just delay. We could use echo or something a bit more fancy, but for today that will do. And I'm going to put it before these compressors I've got that's just beefing up the sound a bit for this video. So what we're going to do here is at the beginning of this last bar, we're going to pull the auto filter down. And then halfway through, we're going to find that this part is kind of silent. I'll turn off the delay for now. Sweet. So it disappears. What we're going to do now is turn on the delay and maybe take the filter this way so there's a bit less sub. Let's hear what happens now. One thing to be wary of, you just heard here, the filter kind of popped up and it affected that first kick. So to change that, I am going to give this a slight curve leading into it. What I might also do is add some feedback to the delay and maybe also fade that in a bit. Let's try it again. The next thing I want to show you is a little bit more composition based than what we've been looking at so far, but I would still call this sound design because I'm literally designing the sound that I need to help my composition move along. Let's add a MIDI track. And here I want to think about complexity in this piece in terms of melody and harmony. So as I said at the beginning, 
Psy trance or trance or music that sounds like this is generally quite simple harmonically. It's supposed to be hypnotic and it's supposed to have a strong repetitive root to it. So one way that we can add some tension and then some release is to introduce something much more complex. And to do this, I'm going to use Wavetable. You could use any synth that you like. This is just easy for the time being. And what I'm going to do is add a MIDI clip into this final bar. In this case, I'm going to start drawing in a rather large chord. And I think to do this, I'll turn this into a square wave or something, yeah, close, and turn on monitoring so we can hear. What I'm going to do is start on a low A, add this, then I'm going to add perhaps a C, so we're building towards a minor chord, an E, but now I'm going to add a G, so we have a A minor 7 rather. I'm going to add a B, so we've also got a ninth in there and maybe a D and an F. And I'm going to press Command A, select these and press legato. So we've got one long, large chord and I could have gone much further. Now I'm going to use the filter cutoff to fade this in. And finally, this is a bit optional, but I like to do this. I'm going to add an LFO to the pitch. So if I press a note now, it sounds a bit wobbly. So that's not quite what we're going for. I'm going to turn up the speed. I'm going to take the amount of this LFO down and just towards the end, I'm going to fade a bit in. Let's hear what that sounds like. So a little bit ugly, and I think that kind of offsets this rather pleasant and almost predictable lead line that I've written afterwards. We could of course take this a lot further. We could add more notes to the chord to make it more complex. We could do things in our synthesizer, like adding a lot of unison, and maybe add something like a phaser afterwards to give it even more color. I'm going to add some ambience on this send, and let's just listen to it one more time. Right, so let's delete this and let's add another MIDI track. And we're going to try something a little bit different. So this time we're going to look at percussion and I'm going to add a rhythm to this piece that's a bit different from what's happening. So you could totally use a sample for this, but today I'm just going to program something really quickly. So let me get, uh, yeah, let's say it's like an 808 kit. Let's be very, very um, unimaginative with that. And now we've got a nice familiar drum sounds. And maybe I'll use these percussion parts. And I'll just jam something in and capture it. Cool, that's exactly what I was looking for. Let's just take these last two bars. So we've got a bit of a donk, 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 donk polyrhythm or a different theme going on. And I'll just quantize that because, you know, I'm a little bit lazy. Excellent. So what we're going to do with this is as it loops and comes towards this, we're going to introduce some noisiness. And you could do this many different ways. I think I'll take it easy today and use a vocoder. I'm going to enhance the carrier, keep it on noise. And let's just hear this last part. So I want a, something a bit brighter. So I'm just going to take away the lower frequencies, something a bit longer. Maybe that needs to be a bit louder. Cool. So I'm going to turn this into noise. I'm going to automate this dry wet so it fades in. And I'm also going to automate this release so it gets longer and longer. So what's going to happen is this new rhythm will be introduced and it will slowly turn into noise. And that will give us a similar effect to using a riser sample or programming that. Let's have a listen.
cool. So the automation here definitely needs playing with, and I think maybe I'd like to distort this or make it even more colourful and maybe add a bit of delay or something, but you get the idea here. We're introducing a new idea temporarily just to show the listener that something new is about to happen. And then when that new idea is finished, it turns into noise, which kind of acts a bit like a crash symbol or something like that. So that was idea number four. Add a new rhythm, destroy it, and move on. So the final thing I want to show today is something that I've been doing a lot now with Live 11 coming out, and that's to use the Spectral Resonator on the master channel. I'm going to pitch this. I'm going to turn on my automation. And I'm just going to, over the last bar, fade this in, hold it for a second, and then come back. Let's see what happens. So maybe actually I'll go an octave up and I'll also automate in this decay because that did a lot, I think, when I raised it up with the mouse. Maybe I could use one of these effects. I'll use chorus and, and maybe I'll just dampen the low frequencies a bit. Let's have a listen one last time. and maybe it also needed a little bit of gain adjustment. But you get the idea. This could be really, really fun if I also used a delay at the end and just kind of faded that in, in the high frequencies. Let's just finally do that. Awesome, quick and easy, and can be lots of fun to play around with. We haven't touched the stretch or the shift or really put too much thought into the settings here. So I hope you enjoyed this and it gave you perhaps some new ideas that you can take into your own productions. Well, I hope you found that useful and that these tips have maybe triggered your imagination and made you think about new ways you could approach this task. So if you've been watching this far, I thought you'd allow me a quick rant while we're on the subject. So of course, we've been talking about sound design today, but really I want to emphasize that when it comes to transitioning from one musical idea to the next, so much of this is part of composition. It's how you compose the music, how you work with chords, with cadences, with rhythms, how you build tension. So while these tricks are of course really useful and fun, I really do encourage you to think of transitions first from a composition point of view, but maybe that's a video we'll take in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. I've been Merlin Silver, and this is the Ableton Certified Trainer Nordic Community. See you next time.